With the arrival of the new C8 Corvette just about to be knocking on the doors of all the pre-orders, the reality of their not being a manual transmission is just about set in. What's going on guys? Devon here with Motive News on Turboshot Incredible. This thing on? Yeah? Okay, cool. Let's take a minute to talk about the new DCT dual clutch transmission that Chevrolet co-developed with Tremec. This transmission is packed with a host of features that should maintain a very engaged driving dynamic. The C8 Corvette has finally hit the hands of some early pre-orders and notably a lot of YouTube automotive enthusiasts. Chevrolet has put together a program to showcase just what the C8 Corvette can do on and off the track. Naturally, we all want to know more. One of the main stars in question is the move to a new DCT. How does it feel? How does it shift? How does it drive? How is it supposed to perform and how does it all work? Well, let's dive right into that latter question. How does it all work? This new DCT was co-developed with Tremec and on the forefront, of course, posed its own unique challenges. Ranging from programming all the various driving modes, each adapting in real time, the harder you drive, the harder the DCT shifts. The more relaxed you drive, the more relaxed it shifts. The guts of this new DCT hosts a barrage of accelerometers, both horizontal and vertical. What? She wants attention right now. The guts of this new DCT includes a host of horizontal and vertical accelerometers while looking at things like throttle position and steering angle to really get a feel for what's going on with the car. And then it makes a decision on how to shift based on that. Take this, the transmission is set in track mode while being an automatic. The car will downshift aggressively while the driver is under hard braking into a turn. And while accelerating back out hard, it'll hold the RPMs, it'll hold the upshift until corner exit. With the manual modes, there are two options. The first option works like this. If you pull the paddle while in drive, it'll enable a temporary manual mode. This will time out automatically or can be exited by holding the upshift lever. While in temporary mode, the car will upshift automatically at redline. Full manual mode is accessed by pressing the M button on the center console. This has no timeout and it will not upshift automatically. It'll let you hold the RPM all the way at redline indefinitely. Now, another really cool feature for this new DCT transmission is when you hold the downshift paddle, the DCT will automatically select the lowest gear possible. Another really neat feature about this transmission, when you hold the downshift paddle, the DCT will serve up the lowest gear possible. Do this while under braking and the DCT will continue to downshift alongside with the engine speed. Now, onto the part that everyone wants to know about. Can this do a burnout? Well, let's take a look. As you can see there, it can do a burnout. And it's quite intuitive as well. Rather than just uh, dumping the clutch, well, since this is a DCT, it has its own dump the clutch mechanism. Uh, this is how it works. In order to push in the clutch, uh, like you would on a normal manual car, you would simply pull both pedals back. This would effectively allow you to free rev the engine, thus allowing you to dump the clutch, spin the tires, and uh, you know, do those super sick burnings that you've been dying to do in your new C8. Now, a really interesting tidbit to note is, the car is so smart that, now, a really interesting tidbit to note is, the car is so smart that if it senses you applying the brakes too hard while uh, dumping the clutch, you know, <clears throat> if it senses you applying the brakes too hard while on throttle, like simulating you doing a burnout, it'll actually cut the power in order to save the powertrain itself, to save the stress from being on the powertrain. So you have to find that happy medium of brake pressure to throttle pressure to really keep the wheel spinning. But it can be done, just takes a little bit of finesse, a little bit of a little bit of learning how the car reacts, but it's pretty cool GM actually enabled that feature to save the powertrain, to save the axles and whatnot from too long, too heavy standing burnouts. Unlike most transmissions that would say, take the signal coming from the paddle shifts and send it to the body control module and then to the transmission control module, GM wanted to circumvent that 
to allow the quickest shifts possible. So what they did is they actually went ahead and attached the paddles are directly wired into the transmission control module. So that can shave up to 40 milliseconds in response time from the time you pull the paddle to the time the transmission makes the gear shift. That's actually really sweet and really smart they went ahead and did that. And even with this added speed, TCM has a built-in protection module to prevent against engine over revs. It, it's almost like they got all the bases covered so far. We'll see how much power this can actually hold up to, but it should, it should be able to hold up quite a bit. Um, we'll get to that later. So with this new DCT, DCT, GM and Tremec have also utilized some trick kinetic sorcery. So they have this new thing called boosted shift. And basically what this means is when you're in a performance launch mode in the C8 Corvette, right? And you go to make a shift, it actually takes the inertia from the engine revving down and applies that to the crankshaft to propel the car forward. And GM calls this the boosted shift. Now this only happens in the performance launch mode. In any other mode, it would unsettle the car and make it too jerky. But performance launch is exactly what you want and gives you a little bit quicker off the line acceleration and in, in, in between constant power. So that's really cool. I'm really excited to see how this performs and how it feels. So let's get down to the nitty gritty of this new DTC. DC, I keep, DTC, DCT, DCT. Let's get down to the nitty gritty of this new DCT, right? So it does come with a built-in LSD. That's awesome. It's electronic LSD to be exact. Host of concentric clutches and input shafts. The even numbered gears in reverse are packed at the front of the transmission, while the odd gears are packed at the rear. This allows the transmission to be selecting the next gear while still about to shift out of the last gear, which helps lower that shift time and also increase the amount of power between shifts so the car doesn't drop off as you're shifting. This does include an LC, like I said, on the base model as well. And I know some of you are wondering, what's the final drive gear ratio gonna be? What are the gear ratios for this gonna be? What can we expect? Let's talk about that right now. Final drive in the base model starts at 4.89 to one. Uh, with the Z51 package, bumps that up to a 5.7 to one. So that's a pretty big, pretty big jump. For those of you that don't know, the higher the number, the shorter the ratio. So these are gonna be pretty short ratios in the base model, a 4.89. Pretty, uh, it's pretty short. For, um, just back in the day, I remember like one of the main common modifications for uh, Mustang GTs back in the day, and some Corvettes was to do, I'm, I'm sorry, Camaros, and Trans was to do gear swaps. So you do like a 373 or a four, four ton gear, give you a more aggressive, shorter gear ratio, so you get those quicker acceleration times. So with the Corvette coming with a 4.89 from the factory, and then a Z51 package getting a 5.17, that's a pretty big jump. That's a pretty aggressive gear ratio, so the car should pull pretty hard. should be pretty fun. So let's get down to the fluid for those of you do-it-yourselfers. So this is going to be using a 11 liters of a Pettinson FFL4 fluid. Now, the cooler is factory top mounted and this helps lower the amount of hydraulic lines in the assembly and going through the engine bay itself. So that's pretty cool. Pretty neat package already. There are two fluid filters that help keep everything clean and there's going to be one x fluid filter that will need to be replaced every 20,000 miles. The internal filters are lifetime, so you don't have to worry about those. Just that one external one every 20,000 miles. What are you doing back there? So, GM's team said they couldn't do a traditional manual for mainly two reasons. Number one, the trans tunnel in the engine compartment is too small. GM's team says they couldn't do a traditional manual due to space in both the pedal box area and engine to trans tunnel. Couple that with the shrinking market for manual cars, and the team just couldn't muster up the reason to want to create a new manual transmission. It sucks. Um, we wish that they would have went ahead and just made one and who knows maybe they will down the line um, You know, there's the rumor of Supra, Supra, Supra Toyota working on a manual um, So, you know, who knows we shall see in time But they say it'd be too hard and not cost-efficient to build the manual So that's why they have this new DCT transmission now the cool thing about this new transmission is it seems like a complete package. Um, it's got, you know, you can dump the clutch on it like you would on the manual. Uh, it's got really good rev matching capabilities. It's got really good shifter capabilities. Um, it should, in theory, on paper, it should honestly 
be just as good as Porsche's PDK. Like GM's really touting this as a revolutionary, innovative new transmission for the Corvette. So I am really excited to see how this performs. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about the new C8 Corvette DCT transmission. Will it be as good as Porsche's PDK? And why or why not? Let me know in the comments below and I look forward to hearing from you guys. Remember to drop a comment, like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Go out there, do something awesome. Peace.